Hi, welcome to Exploring the Illusion of Free Will. My name is George Ortega, and today we're going to be talking about the implications of overcoming the illusion of free will. Okay, before we go into that, I just want to go briefly into um, why I'm doing this show, why the show is important, and then, you know, just give a brief definition of free will so we kind of like understand what exactly it is we're um, referring to. And before I do that, I just want to briefly remind you that the shows are online uh, at Exploring Illusion of Free Will, CausalConsciousness.com. Okay, so if you Google Exploring Illusion of Free Will, and that's the easiest way to find it, because otherwise, Causal Consciousness, you know, sometimes it's hard to spell. All right, anyway, so... Um, so the reason the show is so is important, um, God, there's so many reasons. One is like, I mean, <laughs> we're getting the basic, the basic fundamental fact of reality is that, at least of human beings, is, is that we act, okay? But then um, after that, or maybe that we are. So, but, you know, after that is that we act, and then after that is like, well, what's making us act? And so what I'm trying to say delicately is like, we are out of our minds. Our, the whole of civilization is, is collectively out of our mind in, um, in believing, in concluding that we have a free will. And if you can appreciate that, if you can appreciate the significance of that. Um, you can understand the need for this show. Because if we get, you know, one of the very base, basic foundations of our human reality wrong, if you start off with the wrong premise, you know, you're going to get a lot wrong um, as a result. I mean, um, basically the idea is like we can create a much more intelligent, kinder, more compassionate world by understanding the, the, um, the true nature of our human will, by understanding that the free will is an illusion, by understanding that whatever we do, we're completely compelled to do, that everything is a movie. I mean, I know it's surreal. I know that it's, it's gonna, um, there's going to be certain challenges. In other words, we have to give up that kind of pride uh, when we do something right, for example, and we're going to have to replace it with gratitude, which is like, you know, pretty much a traditional religious precept anyhow, so it's not like that should be so difficult. All right, and, um, and what do we mean by free will? Okay, when we say free will, we mean that what we do is up to us. You know, it's not up to anything. It's not up to anything we, that we can't control, okay? That's the accepted definition of free will. And that, you know, then the, the, um, the corollary of that, the, um, the logical extension, is that if we're not in control of what we do, obviously we are not accountable morally, personally, in any way. We're not responsible, ultimately, for what we do because, like, you know, we are, like, completely programmed. We can't but do what we do. It's not up to us. So that's the basic definition. And naturally, you know, if you've seen all the shows, I mean, there, there are different ways of, of understanding why that's impossible, why, you know, why it's impossible for us to make decisions that are free from our upbringing, free from our genetics, free from, um, free from the unconscious that actually is really, you know, when we think about it, responsible for making the decision. All right, let's get into the, the theme of today's show. Okay, so how is our world going to change by, um, by our collectively understanding the, the true nature of human will? First, it's going to be on, on a personal level. I got a great story for this. This is very cool. Okay, I am like, um, I've got this woman um, with whom I am very, very good friends. And, um, you know, I've, she's just amazing. She's a beautiful, wonderful, I mean, really amazing person. And so here's the thing. 
fine, we're really close, we're good friends, we're very close friends in a lot of ways. We're, we probably have more in common with each other than we have with anyone else on the planet. Very cool. But, see, we don't have a free will. Um, she doesn't have a free will. Um, she's, she's not attracted to me in that, in that way. You know, she, she's attracted to me in a, in, a phys, in a platonic way, you know, which is great. We have a great time. But, you know, like, finding her so attractive and, and wonderful and, and everything, I um, kind of, like, am compelled, because I don't have free will either, to, um, to want, you know, to kind of, like, have um, a more complete relationship with her. Now, she, she, um, she doesn't want that, and I can completely understand that, because there's a lot of people in the world that I don't want to have a complete relationship with. So, so, you know, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. And this, like, I think everybody can relate to this. A lot of times when we want somebody to like us in a certain way or to like us, you know, or to do stuff. I mean, it's not just about liking, it's about anything. And they don't. They don't fulfill our desires, our wishes, our expectations, all this stuff. We will, like, <laughs> we'll go to war. <laughs> What's the matter with you? Why aren't you doing this? Why don't you feel this way? <laughs> and... We go at each other, you know, and, and so, like, here's the thing, all right, so, this is the very cool thing, this is, like, this is the purpose of this show in action, in my personal life, um, because I know that my wonderful friend does not have a free will, I don't blame her or hold her accountable, naturally, I, I feel a little, um, I, I become angry with the universe, you know, with, with the causal past that puts this amazing woman in front of me and says, no, I'm sorry, you can only be friends. <laughs> but, but, um, but I don't blame her. And that's the key, because when I don't blame her, then our relationship, our friendship is, is, um, is benefited, you know, is, is, is improved. It's, um, my God, yeah, and, and it works, because like, you know, I've been doing this show, I've been taping since um, the day after Thanksgiving last year, actually, and, and I, I run meetups on this, so I talk about this a lot, I think about this a lot, and over the months, I'm beginning to integrate this, and so like what's happening with my friend and I is like we're going, and this is like in general we could do, as we overcome this illusion of free will, <coughs> we go from the, um, the blame perspective, the judgment perspective, the accountability perspective, to the understanding perspective, to the idea that, well, wait a minute, it would be logically wrong for, let's say in my case, for me to blame my friend since she's completely compelled. It's not up to her, you know? If she had a free will, maybe she would like, you know, have the same kind of attraction for me that I, that I had for, have for her. I don't know. But here's, all right. So that, basically, I got to get on to the other stuff because like, um, but the basic idea is, is that to the extent that we understand that our human will is not causal, we go from that competitive, aggressive relationship with everybody. This is like your, your friends, everybody, you know, with whom you, can't, you have any kind of interaction with, to the... Um, To the idea that, you know, you're both on the same side. We're both on the same side. We're, we're not, like, fighting with each other, uh, with, excuse me, with each other. We're, we're trying to, um, we're trying to kind of, like, work with a fate, trying to understand a fate. In other words, like, if somebody does something that we consider wrong, we go from, like, wow, you're a bad person, you know, deserve to, you know, <laughs> deserve to be punished. We go from there to, yo, you know, dude, <laughs> um, Why? Why, um, why do you think the universe caused this situation between us? You know, how do you think um, it can be resolved, whatever? But this, it's cooperation. It's no longer conflict. And that's the key. That, that's a very important key. There's, there's other benefits of, of like, understanding our, the causal nature of a will. For example, like that we don't blame ourselves. So, like, we might have a conscience. We might know right from wrong and want to do right because actually we're compelled, you know, we have this moral, com you know, imperative. But we, we wouldn't blame ourselves and feel the guilt, the pain of guilt, okay, that, that, that comes along with that blame. All right, so, so now, you know, we've got a pretty good understanding of 
of why um, it makes a lot of sense in our personal lives to overcome the illusion of free will and understand the basic reality of human will as being unconscious or causal. And again, I can't, I can't explain all this stuff in detail all the time, so I would just refer you to some excellent, excellent um, episodes that, that, um, that I go into step by step, you know, why the unconscious, how the unconscious um, makes free will impossible, how causality makes free will impossible, how even if there was randomness, that would make free will impossible, you know, a um, lot of episodes on this. So, so let's, let's go now to how the, the legal implications of, um, of the world understanding that human will is an illusion. You've got like, oh, here in the United States we imprison more people as a percentage of our population than any other country in the world. I think Russia had that distinction for a while, but I think it's us now. Um, and here's the thing, so <clears throat> the problem is like with our criminal justice system, a couple hundred years ago it was like, it was about reform. That's why they were called reformatories and it was about penitence. That's why they were called penitentiaries. Uh, um, it was about taking people who, you know, the, the perspective back then was that they were possessed that it wasn't really their fault, you know, per se. Well, I don't know. It's hard to say. But the idea, it was, it was about <clears throat> reform. It was, uh, it was about, you know, taking people who had made mistakes and teaching them their or their ways um, for their benefit, you know, so that they can get to heaven, whatever, you know. And, but, you know, over the last, especially 100 years in the United States, we've gone from this kind of compassionate, caring not just for the victim but also for the other victim you know the, um, the victim of fate that, that you know ultimately you know often ends up in jail and prison um, we end up caring about them you know we, we end up um, naturally we, we have to protect society we have to we can't allow people to just to do whatever we want because you know we have to maintain order but you know, when, when, you, when you relate to address a person who's done something wrong, a criminal, from the perspective of, of, listen, you know, we, the world, everybody understands that you were completely compelled to do what you did. You had no choice. It's really, it wasn't really up to you. But, you know, we're going to like, we, we first have to like, you know, make sure you, you, you don't, you know, continue doing it. And we're going to try to help you understand why you do it so you stop doing it or, you know, if that's not possible, then, you know, we, we, we may have to, like, separate you um, from, you know, the wider society. But it can be done without the punishment. I mean, sometimes punishment serves as a deterrent. You know, in other words, when, you, when, when we punish um, somebody who, unfortunately, you know, through no fault of their own, finds himself doing something that um, the society um, does not condone, then yeah, sometimes like you know, to have a law that um, that punishes that kind of action will deter people from doing it. And and you know, I I think that you know, makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I mean, who who could argue against that? But you know, um, the other part is that you know, while we while we maintain order in society, if to the extent that we move from a free will perspective to a causal will perspective in addressing these criminals among us um, who are as innocent as we are, um, we can probably lessen crime because what, what happens is, all right, um, there is a technique in policing that I'm sure most a lot of people are familiar with, good cop, bad cop that um, when they're questioning, you know, a suspect, whatever, um, they might have one police officer um, just really, let's say, take the free will perspective. You are evil, you know, you did this wrong, you're a criminal, you're going to suffer, whatever, and this is like the bad cop, right? And a lot of times, generally, I would say more often than not, that just creates an adversarial relationship with that where the uh, criminal says to themselves, criminals say to themselves, well, you know, it's like, 
we have society in one hand and we have me and we're at odds and you know it's like it's a war in a sense and and then you have like the um the good cop and the good cop is going to like empathize with the uh, suspect he, the good cop's going to say to the the suspect listen you know i understand it's hard out there i understand i, I understand you no let's let's go you know from the um yeah let's move it up to like the good cop actually now um working from the the causal unconscious world perspective the the, the cop is going to say to the to the person listen we understand that it was not up to you that it was not up to you that you had to do what you you did and but you know we have to take certain measures to um to protect society but we're also concerned for your welfare we're going to try to help you and um so that to the extent that that happens then all of a sudden the criminal suspect no longer feels the um the sting of that adversarial relationship the sting of that um you know being unfortunately fated to be at odds with the way um society um generally works in in various ways and to the extent that that happens i would guess that um recidivism would decrease substantially that um the rehabilitative efforts you know both within and without the um inside and outside of the criminal justice system would um would just it 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 would, it would create a much better circumstance much much better outcomes you know much less crime all right that's my prediction i mean um all right let's go to the socio economic uh this is something i don't talk about too much um under the causal world perspective if you do something good you deserve to be rewarded and if you do something better than a lot of people you deserve to be rewarded much more than other people so um but you know what happens with that is like that means that some of us are fated to do wonderful things bill gates i mean like or amazing things you know um zuckerberg um buffett um all these you know a lot of billionaires and we're rewarding them meanwhile you know 25,000 kids are dying every day of poverty you know um 25,000 kids every day think about that um we lost 3,000 in 9/11 So um you know 8 9 times that amount every day um so that with a causal world perspective to the extent that our world transcends the illusion of free will we say to ourselves fine you, you have somebody like Bill Gates who's a genius with computer give him the the means and sometimes it might be financial in terms of like allowing a person to do what they do the best you know give them the means to do what um what they can do so well better than everyone else but don't reward them better than anyone else cuz it's not really their their doing in other words like bill gates would be making the same salary <coughs> as as anyone but you know if he needs like you know um hundred million dollars or something to uh, this is kind of like we're getting into kind of like creating a different kind of like a socialist society really in a certain sense um but that's 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 part of the socioeconomic yeah, implications of this that yeah no longer there's no longer a rationale to to reward someone more than another for the work they do because again they're um it wasn't up to them um geopolitical my god um so much remember reagan's statement um about the soviet union being the evil empire um you know countries say stuff like that about us all the time you know we we just like we we're in a in a world where um politically 
you know, geopolitically, we're, we're blaming each other. We're saying, well, they're the evil ones. And they're saying, no, we're the evil ones. And chances are we're all the evil ones, but it's not our fault. And that's the thing. To the extent that we understand that it's not our fault, we go from blaming and fighting and killing each other and just basically destroying virtually every chance we have of surviving climate change. Because if we're fighting each other, I promise you, we're not going to like um, solve climate change. But to the extent we overcome that perspective, we will um, <clears throat> start working together, you know. Um, and the same kind of reasoning applies on a geopolitical level as it would apply on a personal level. It's not, it doesn't mean that, like, countries are all of a sudden allowed to, to do whatever they want, but from, a, from the more understanding, compassionate, intelligent perspective of causal will, um, much more can conceivably get done in that area. Educational, all right, we've got about six more minutes. Um, educational, all right. What happens, education is really um, a kind of a... Um, It's causal will in action. In other words, we, we educate, we spend, you know, my God, K through 12, 13 years of, of education plus maybe another four of college. You're, you're up to 17 years, you know, more for grad school of, of teaching people things. And, um, and the thing is, like, we know that what we teach kids, especially at a very early age and and at an early age in general, is going to determine how they end up as adults. At least uh, we kind of know that. But the problem is that to the extent that we continue the causal will perspective, I mean, I'm sorry, the free will perspective, rationally, we can say to ourselves, well, you know, it's not going to really matter how much or little we invest in our kids because they have this free will. I mean, like, once they're an adult, they're free to kind of like, you know, just not consider anything that we've taught them. They're free to just, like, do whatever they want, completely free of those influences. And naturally, it's wrong, but, you know, it's a wrong conclusion, but having that conclusion, what, what does that mean? Then all of a sudden, you're not investing the, the required resources in molding our next generations to be the kind of people that they um, could potentially be, you know, much better, addressing the needs of the planet, much happier. So, um, so yeah, so the, the idea is that as we overcome the illusion of free will, we can, um, we can apply that, that um, understanding to our education, excuse me, educational system much more so. Um, my last show I did about almost 140 episodes was The Happiness Show. It's about happiness because happiness is really what everything is about. And, for example, if we started teaching kids K to 12, um, God, let's say two hours a week, all right, because I know that like, school would have to do so much now. Two hours a week on basic happiness and goodness skills. And, you know, I know with the goodness you have to, like, you have to really keep it to, to universal truths because, like, you know, one idea, one person's idea of goodness may not be another's, whatever. But to the extent that we, we invest the resources based on this understanding that what we teach kids is what we're going to get out, that they don't have a free will, then, then yeah, we can, we can program, engineer, call it whatever you want. We can, like, we can see to it that our kids, when they become adults, are both good and happy. And uh, that would be a godsend to them and to the rest of the world. Okay, and we've got about three more minutes, so this is the cool thing. All right, so take everything together. This is huge. This is huge. Let me tell you something. I'm like, I'm, I'm like a prophet over here. I mean, like, I'm kind of like, the way I start the show, um, you know, is free will and illusion, that would be a bigger, um, what is it, that would be a, a bigger revolution in our thinking than Einstein, Freud, or not Freud, um, Copernicus, Galileo, uh, Newton, and um, Darwin. It's true. This transcending the illusion of free will is actually 
creating a new species of man. We go from like um, Homo sapien. Oh, I, I, I was thinking of like some term for this. I, I um, see if I can remember this. We go from like Homo sapien, and I, I don't know like um, what the this exact classification would be, you know, with the biological classifications, but Homo sapien. Um, autonomous will to, to Homo sapien, um, oh, can I remember this? I don't, I don't know, I can't remember it, but the idea, it's a brand new species, Homo, Homo sapien um, causal conscious, or something like that, I don't know. But um, it's, yeah, it, it's, it's a brand new consciousness, it's a brand new species. I mean, you know, the difference between us and the last species, I don't know, what is it, um, uh, Neanderthal, who knows? Um, it, it it basically involved physiological. I mean, certainly the brain became larger. There were like some, there were there were a lot of psychological changes also, actually, you know. But it was predominantly uh, physical. But now we're moving from a um, an era where you know humanity goes from understanding or from you know, believing that they have a free will to understanding that they have a causal will, it's a brand new consciousness. It's a brand new consciousness. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's like a new species. So, all right, well, that's, that's it for now. You know, I wish I had more time because that, that's, that's a topic that I want to, um, i got to devote an, an entire show to it because, it, it, you know, it, it's major. It's major. This is the biggest thing. I mean, happiness is always the biggest thing, and naturally survival is big. You know, we got to address climate change. But, but in terms of, like, how we're going to do this, if we can get this right, if we can get the causal nature of our will right, then happiness and saving the planet is going to be much easier. And I, I wish I could take credit, but that's the universe. All right, I'll see you um, sometime soon.